side of the sun that you live with. I'm far away from you, far away from you. <laughs> what a year this has been. And so I'm going to look this evening at a passage from you, but through the eyes of the shepherds and the wise men and Mary and Joseph. But first the question, what brings you here? Why are you here this evening? Have you come because you haven't been in the building for a very long time? Or maybe you are hoping to see people that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe because it's tradition, something that you and your family have done for many years, and you don't want to break that tradition. Suddenly this year, all the things that were not so important to us are suddenly very important to us. Maybe it's become convenient for you to come to church on Christmas Eve because you know that you'll have Christmas morning free to finish off all the last bits of preparation for that massive lunch that you're looking forward to. So let's ask the shepherds, the wise men, and Mary and Joseph, what brings them to Bethlehem? Who speaks for the shepherds? The shepherds' response is, you know how it is on my ship. And we have some people here who work ships, so they don't know. The rhythm of your job takes over. It's dark and it's peaceful. You can hardly see each other. It makes it easy to talk, to spill what's on your mind to people that you trust knowing that there's not no one to really over here. You share your problems, but you also share your dreams without being laughed at. For the shepherds, someone mentioned the old talk of a Messiah, a leader to restore the independence of the Hebrew people, a leader like King David. Work and 
We have so many people telling us what to do, and so many books telling us how to do it, that we really have become quite confused. We search for the guru, we search for the perfect person to tell us how we must do things, the perfect celebrity chef on how to make the perfect salami or what is it, the cake down the food system. Like everyone has a recipe of how to make the perfect food system, right? But we spend our time searching for the perfect recipe for the food system. There are so many people telling us what to do, how to do it, when to do it. We have no idea who we should be listening to. Perhaps we are like Mary and Joseph. Out there doing their civic duty, what society and the family demands of us. The pressures to think and live in a certain way, abiding by the decisions of people we never see, trying to keep our individuality intact in the face of others' demands and rights. Wishing for happiness while keep trying to keep others happy. We all want to be happy. But we all also will be trying to keep other people happy that we find ourselves to be very visible, actually. Try this time of year, in particular, if you haven't worked out before, where are you having lunch? With your in laws, with your parents? Say when you go to the city, you don't have to make a decision, maybe I'll just stay at home. But in other years, it's always been a difficult thing. Same thing with one of I got married, Ted has always been to visit his grandparents in George. And so we never had that at that moment. We always just asked him out. <laughs> but tomorrow, his parents come and say, like, that. <laughs> so, <laughs> trying to keep others happy, making decisions about who to vote for, wondering how to respond to the need in our community, to the homeless people, the homeless crisis in our city. Even in the wide world, the things that disturb us, and there's a lot going on in the world that if that isn't disturbing you, then we need to have a conversation. And so we go to this table, to this really simple story. This simple story in the middle of chaos, we find beauty and we find peace. Do you get what you're trying for? Do you think you will get what you're trying for? I'm not sure why you've come tonight, but let's hear from the shepherd. The shepherd say, no, they didn't get what they came for. This is not what history taught us to expect. The helplessness of this baby, this poor location, a stable, rough and ready Joseph, who's really just an ordinary man, Mary is just like the girl next door, there's nothing special about her. It didn't match the Messiah talks of the century. They were expecting a baby boy, a prince to be born in a lavish castle somewhere, surrounded by lots of soldiers and lots of expensive presents. And then they find this. We didn't get what we came for, something to admire or something to marvel at. But we got something else. A feeling of awe, as if we were in a holy place. A feeling that the tangle of our lives could be sorted. A kind of nameless hope. And so in the midst of all that's going on for shepherds, they, come, they don't find what they're looking for, but what they do find is something of nameless hope. What do the wise men get? Their answer is no, we also didn't get what we came for. We wanted it to be explained. Because that's the kind of people we are. We tell people what's going to happen in their future. So we want to know. But we don't get that. We wanted everything explained, what our lives were for, what we were aiming at. We did not find any meaning that would turn us into gurus. <laughs> To whom everyone came. Rather, we were cured of looking for explanation. The star brought us to an encounter with humility, a giving and receiving, a peace that we couldn't explain. And so we went home another way. And so the wise men come wanting answers, and do they find answers in this place? In fact, they get 
to find out about the birth of Jesus as soon as he had gone. And what else do we need from Mary and Joseph? Well, they certainly didn't get what they were looking for. Or maybe they did. Far from satisfying or escaping the demands of their society, they are placed in the years that follow with the double dose of demands. To flee from a king. Remember, as soon as Jesus is born, Joseph is told to be fluidly, you must leave, you must go away, you must go and live as a foreigner, as a refugee in Egypt. Because the king, Herod, wants to kill your son. They are criticized by others because their child is a bit of a misfit. Jesus knows far too much for his age. Remember that incident? When he stays behind and talks to the scribes in the temple and his parents leave because they think he's with all the other children. And about two days later they realize he's not with them. And then he finds him and says, like, what are you thinking? And his response is, well, we are to be to find him. But with attitude, right? So they have to deal with this boy as well. And they have to deal with the disappointment that the eldest son doesn't turn out to be the son that every parent hoped for. Because as soon as Jesus announces his public ministry, he leaves his home. He doesn't work for his mother and give her his first paycheck. No, he leaves. And she has to go with him. She has to follow him all over the place. And many times, she's the one who has to make friends with other women in order to support the ministry of Jesus. Yet they grew with him and they loved him and they had to watch him die a very cruel death. So no, Mary and Joseph didn't get what they were hoping for. And so what did you come for? I hope you do get something of what you came for but also something that you didn't for. Something to hold on to. Something steady in this story. At a time when our communities, our country, our world is consumed with death. Our world is consumed with death. I'm sure that each and every one of you as you are sitting here knows someone who has died of this life. Our world is consumed with violence, with inequality, with racism. I hope that tonight we will get something that reminds us of who we are and where we belong. I hope that you may go away from here a little bit freer, a little less tired to the habits of what you think people want you to do and you think people want you to which is what in the end gives rise to the conflict in the world. If we aren't honest about the things that we want to do, if we aren't honest about the things that we say, that we want to say and the things that we feel, that is where the conflict starts. Look at the surface of the United States. Look at the surface of the politics in our country. It is sad that at a time like this when the world often is rejoicing, many people will not rejoice tomorrow. Many people will not rejoice this Christmas season. Maybe because they lost the loved ones of COVID. But maybe because they lost their jobs. Maybe because they've been treated unfairly. Maybe because they don't know if their child has got a space in a school next year. Maybe because they don't know where their next place of food is going to come. I hope that you will go away having found some light in your lives from this poor stable and a peace that can't be explained. Maybe that you will feel renewed by the simplicity and the innocence of what that first Christmas was like. I wrote in my newsletter, in our newsletter, all 22 pages of our newsletter, I wrote in the very beginning that the first Christmas
Go home tonight to go home. 